Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well we've got one for you today. We've got this sort of image blurb grid. We've got a bunch of blurbs on top of an image. When we hover over one of them it pops up with a different image. And obviously when you click on it it'll take you to wherever you put a link in there for. And that's a great little eye-catching feature to have on your site. Really easy to do. We're not using any extra plugins or any CSS code to do this today. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is enable the Visual Builder. Okay, well let's add a new section below this one. Just use a regular section. And I'm going to put three columns in mine. Obviously you put in however many you want. And I'm going to put a blurb module in that first column. There we go. I'm going to leave that just like it is. And let's delete this top section. Okay, so we're left with our blurb and a little section here. Let's go into the blurb. I want to use an icon rather than a module there. Obviously put whatever title you want to go in yours here. Let's take away this content. You may want more content. If so, just leave a bit in there. I'm just going to put read more. I'm going to use a little alt code symbol for a couple of double arrows on the right hand side there. And I'll put this below this URL below the video. And I'm going to use a couple of double arrows right there. It's an alt code and it's got the code of 0187. So all we need to do is hold down your alt key put 0187 and you've got your little chevrons there all right if I roll down a little bit image and icon I want to use an icon Let's just grab that little map icon that'll do fine now I'm going to go over to my design I'm just going to pop everything in the middle I'm going to make that icon a little bit smaller. So just up above the text, we've got our icon here. We use a sort of light blue color. We hit the three little dots underneath the color there, bring up the color palette. That's fine. And I want it to be a little smaller than that. So I'm going to take it down in size. Something like that, around about 50 pixels. That works for me. Okay. Now initially we don't want to see any image behind this. But when we hover over it, we want to see an image. So let's go in here. We'll go down to our content, down to background. I'm going to add, I'll add that in a minute actually. Let's add an image, but I only want the image on hover. So if we hover over the dark writing here, and this is common to most Divi modules, if you ho hover over the dark writing, some icons will pop up. If there's an arrow there, we can set a regular state when your mouse is not on it and a hover state when your mouse is on it. So let's add the background image. Yeah. Pop that one in there. So we've got that in there, but I only want it on hover. When we're not hovering, no background image. When we are hovering, background image. And I'm just going to give it a slight overlay so we can read our text a bit better. I'm going to make that text light in color as well. So I'm going to go over to my design, text, and make this light in color. Go back to my content, my background. Now I'm going to add a background color. I'm going to make it black. And we're on hover still, just on the hover state. Don't want anything there for the regular state. If I click on the color, take the opacity down a little bit. And then what we're going to do, we're going to blend the two together by clicking on the image rolling down image blend i'm going to use multiply there's some great effects here you can use what you want that way we can read our white writing and see our image as well black's a great one for doing that if you want to see more of it pull your opacity down if you want to see less of it pull your opacity up now i want to be able to see the image but i still want to read the actual text that's fine okay 
Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a little bit more space. I'm going to give it 100 picks top and bottom, but I'm going to make this row full width. So I may want to readjust. So I've gone over to Design tab. I'm going to go to Spacing. Padding top and bottom, I'm going to put a 100 picks in there. Just put the 100, it'll put the picks in for you. Hit the chain, it'll do the opposite side. Great, well that's looking okay. But like I said, I want to make my row full width. I want to put a background image in it. I'm going to give this a slight border so it looks more like a grid. So let's save our little blurb right here. We'll go into the row, green tab. I'm going to go to design, sizing. I want to make it full width, width right there. I'm going to slide that up to 100%. I'm going to copy that, control C, and paste it in the max width below, control V. We've now got a full width section that stretches the full width of the screen. But I also don't want any gutters. Gutters gutters are the space between modules or the space between columns actually and I don't want any space so I'm going to flip this to on and put the cutter, gutter width down to zero. That'll give us no space in between. Okay we can't really see a whole lot here so let's go in and give our row a background image. Okay, let's go back to our content, down to background. Let's give it a background image. And we'll use that picture of the city I used before. And as you can see, there it is in the background. You can read the title and see the icon OK after that. If not, we could dull this down a little bit so it stands out a bit more. Same exact way, we'll go into the background, we'll add a black for the color go into the image and we'll say multiply or you can use different options and all we can see there is black because we haven't pulled the opacity down so if we go back to the black click on the black field there pull the opacity down so we can see enough of the image but still be able to see our icon clearly and read the text over the top of it all right well that works pretty well for me so let's save our changes here. What I'm going to do is go back into my little module here. And I'm going to give it a border. So I'm going to go down to design. Border. Roll down a little bit. I'm going to give it one pixels. As you can see, it's put it around there. But I want it to be a sort of faint white or a light gray. So I'm going to put a white color in there. But again, I'm going to bring the opacity down so it's slightly less. There we go. And if we want to link this module somewhere, we can go into the content to the link and tell it where we want it to go. I'm going to link the whole module rather than just the title or the icon. So I'm going to put it in the module link here. Now I've got a CSS ID of gal on the gallery below, so I'm just going to link it to there for an example. So in the module link, either put whatever URL you want, or I'm just going to put hashtag gal, my CSS ID for my gallery down below. Okay, well let's see this, and we'll just make sure it's all going to work on the front end. Save draft. And exit the Visual Builder. Okay, when we hover over that, our image should appear. Fantastic. That's fine. So what we need to do now is get rid of the space top and bottom on this row, because I want it buffered up against top and bottom. And then we'll duplicate this and just change the images out. So let's enable our Visual Builder. Now we know it's going to work on that end. And I'm going to take away the space top and bottom on the row, the green tab. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the actual section itself, because I want this to be buffered up against the top and buffered down against the next section below. So let's go into our section first, the blue tab. I'm going to go to Design, Spacing. I'm simply going to put a zero in the padding for top and bottom. Hit the chain, it'll get the bottom. So that's taking it away from the section. 
Now I need to do exactly the same for the row, the green tab right here. Design, spacing. I put a zero in and hit the chain. There we go, we've got no actual gaps top and bottom there, which is what I want. Fantastic. Now I can go in and I can duplicate this one by simply hitting the square or the two squares right there. And we'll duplicate it again. And we can drag one over, it doesn't matter which one because they're all exactly the same. And we simply need to go in, change the text to whatever you want your next text to be. Obviously change the link to where you want this one to link to. Then we'll go in the background. Remember to hit the hover because we've only got an image on hover and we can change the image. There's our image for that one right there. And I'm going to rinse and repeat till I've got all of them in there. I'll pause this video. No point you watching me duplicate this and change out the images. I'm sure you understand the way it works now. And there we go. I'll just change out the last one. I'm going to save my changes here. Say draft or publish if you're ready. Exit the visual builder. And here we are. Here's our little image section with a blurb when you hover over it. It's going to pop up our images. All I did was changed out the icon and the link and obviously the title there to something more appropriate. Like I say, that's a nice little thing to have on your site. Click on it. It'll take us where we want to go. Job done. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a little image grid with blurb modules. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.